The Basilisk is one of the most popular Razer gaming mice, closely mimicking the design of the best selling gaming mouse of all time and the Basilisk's biggest competitor, the Logitech G502. Today we'll be looking at the new Basilisk V3 Pro to see if it managed to overcome its fierce competition, the new Logitech G502 X Plus. In this video I'm going to be asking and answering three things. Is the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro a good gaming mouse? Is it worth its high price point and how does it stack up against the G502 X Plus? I've already reviewed the G502X Plus and I've been very critical of everything G502 recently, even angering some of its loyal fans, but it's okay, the truth hurts. This one however does contain a lot more advanced technology that I'll go over. Fans of previous Basilisk mice will be very happy to see that the shape remains the same. There's no new nasty surprises for you to get used to. In fact, it looks pretty much identical to all of the Basilisks that preceded this one. For those unfamiliar with this shape and have avoided both this and a G502, it's a more relaxed palm grip mouse, which is designed for your hand to just sit on it really. It's comfortable to hold for long periods of time and with only one minor discomfort, which I'll get onto later. I would only recommend using this with a palm grip mainly, as I feel this is too large for it to be comfortable with other grip types. If you also have small hands as well, this might be a struggle to use, especially if you're wanting to make use of the thumb button on the side. This is also a bit of a chunky boy, weighing 112 grams compared to the heaviest G502X Plus, which is just 106 grams. Not a huge difference, but might be important for someone with brittle bones. Continuing with the comfort side, the coating is something that Razer has always stood out with their coarse matte coating. Needless to say that here it might be a little bit too uncomfortable for some as it really is coarse in comparison to Logitech's G502. It also has one of my least favourite features which is rubber grips on the sides. These are just dirt magnets and can also get a bit uncomfortable which leads me to the minor discomfort I was talking about earlier. As the rubberized section creeps up towards the top of the mouse, when I rest my finger here it starts to rub and get a bit irritating, which isn't something that I've had in a mouse before. Granted, it only does it when playing games because that's when my gamer grip becomes engaged and if I were to die holding a mouse in my hand, nothing would be able to free it from my grip. There's also a few accented lines which are quite glossy and also seem to collect a lot of dirt. Now we move on to the areas that start to see the difference between the G502X series and this one, including the one that I'm very excited about. I never thought I'd get excited about anything in my life after my fifth birthday party. The main switches are using the Razer Generation 3 optical switches. We'll see if they've gotten these switches right, if there's a Generation 4 or not, but these feel nice. On the Viper V2 Pro and the Death Adder V3 Pro, I felt like these switches sounded hollow. But with this one, because of, I guess, more structural integrity, there is a bit more stability and a higher quality sound with them. Comparing these to other switches, the average person won't really find anything wrong with them. These are lighter than the new G502X Lite 4 switches, though, so that's a plus. You get a scroll lock, DPI, side buttons, and thumb button, and that's where it stops at the Basilisk, as you're lacking the two extra buttons next to the mouse one that the G502 has. Some may be sad that these still don't exist on the Basilisk, and I'm glad they're not personally as they just got in the way. You do get a thumb button which isn't removable unlike the G502X versions. I do misclick this one often so I do have to unbind it in the software. Now we get to the advanced technology that really made me raise my eyebrows, both of them. This scroll wheel is really, really good. I think this feature has been in the previous version of Basilisk, but I haven't really looked at it in detail. Basically, it's an unlockable scroll wheel, but with a twist or a turn. Get it? Because it's a wheel. You can press it and it will toggle between tactical and free spin, the usual. But in the software, you can turn on smart reel. So basically, it will swap between the two automatically. If you're doing some slow scrolling, just between a few notches, it will stay in the tactile setting. If you flick or start scrolling faster, it will then unlock the scroll wheel, then relock it once it stopped. I honestly think this is amazing. I'm probably late to the party on this, but for work-related stuff, this is really, really good. Playing games, it might be more game-specific. For example, in Path of Exile, I can use it to scroll through my stash tab of hot garbage. The scroll wheel outside of this neat function is okay. There's some extra buttons, so you can move the wheel left or right for some extra binds and functions. In terms of quality, there have been points where it does rattle, especially when using the left and right wheel functions. However, this scroll wheel does have a few moving parts and technology packed in it, which probably causes a bit of a rattle. I guess only time can really decide how this scroll wheel and its features fare in the long term. The technology doesn't stop there with this mouse. This is using Razer's new 30K optical sensor. Basically, it's a leading sensor, probably one of the best you can get on the market. It can track on glass and has features 
featured in the previous Pro Series mice from Razer, so it has been tested and approved. If you're experiencing a technology overload, please do not be alarmed, but brace yourself for more technology. There's even a fancy wireless charging technology sold separately. You swap the puck out on the bottom of this mouse with another one, and you can slap it on the dock. Not as extravagant and cool as some other bits of technology that's featured. This is how I charge mine. It's called a USB Type-C cable. It comes included. It connects to the front of the mouse, and there you go, it's charging. The best thing is, look, I can still use it whilst it's charging. You can't do that with your fancy charging dock now, can you? You may think, yeah, but the dock has RGB and your cable doesn't. Well, my personality extends further than just 16.8 million colours. Moving away from the horrifying world of technology, let's get to what we really care about, gaming. When I've been using it in games, it's been okay, and it's just okay. Allow me to explain. Because of my incredible grip strength and the combination of rubberized sides, this mouse can get a bit uncomfortable for me. I just can't help squeezing the mouse when fragging, right? Leave me alone. Coupled with the weight being a bit too much for my liking, it somewhat seems like a bit of an underwhelming gaming mouse in that regard. But only in the context of playing it in a highly competitive environment. I don't mean like playing pubs or being stuck in gold or whatever the lower ranks are of whatever game you're playing. I'm talking about playing in master lobbies on Apex for example when things get a bit sweaty and you gotta play with the pros. For the more casual and less intense games this has been brilliant. As I said in a few games I've made use of the unlockable scroll wheel so I'm not saying it's bad it's just not great to use in a specific gaming environment. The last thing though you might be wondering is this a reasonable gift to ask mummy and daddy to get for you at Christmas. Well this thing costs around $160 so it is a steep asking price for a gaming mouse that's for sure. It's on the same price level as the highest Logitech G502 X Plus. It's also more expensive than their fit for high level competitive gaming mice such as the Viper V2 Pro and Death Adder V3 Pro. So this ties into can I recommend it or should you buy it? I think it depends on the purpose of this mouse. If you're a more casual gamer maybe someone that does a lot of work with spreadsheets, video editing, anything that requires a lot of scrolling then I'd say yes, this is a good mouse to pick up. The scroll wheel itself is well worth it. It's not to say that you can't play highly competitive games at an above average level with it. It's just that in my experience, using a lightweight, streamlined mouse is a lot better for keeping a consistent level over a longer period. Personally, using this mouse for 5 plus hours on Apex Legends wouldn't be impossible, but in comparison to using a Death Adder V3 Pro, I would most certainly feel a bit of fatigue and discomfort on my hand after a while. So if you're looking for something designed for competitive gaming, I wouldn't personally say this is a good option. I'm not saying this is a bad gaming mouse, I'm just saying for what I would normally look for in a gaming mouse isn't something that I would normally go for. I can imagine a scenario where I use the Basilisk V3 Pro for work and then swap to my competitive designed eSport Focus Advanced Technology Extreme Performance Cutting Edge Lightweight Zero Distraction Streamline Pro Game with Tested Laser Focus Enabling Fatigue Reducing Razer Death Adder V3 Pro as an example when it's time to frag hard. So overall if you make use of the features that come with this mouse and I'd say it's worth it. If you're not too sure or you just know you won't use all the bells and whistles on this mouse then the Pro Series mice such as the Viper V2 Pro or the Death Adder V3 Pro will do just fine. If you're wanting to know my thoughts on the G502X Plus there's a review on screen now that you might enjoy.